Global News on the level, on the go. How he died trying to help. Radar is clear. It's partly cloudy in 64 downtown. I'm Kurt Darling for Lake City Bank. Here's what's trending at 902. A sheriff's deputy in Hendricks County is dead. Deputy Fred Fissler was killed responding to a crash along a county road near Plainfield. Sheriff Jack Sadler says Fissler came into contact with some downed power lines and was likely electrocuted. A motorist was also an eyewitness observed Deputy Fissler down and used his radio to notify dispatch of an officer down. Fissler had been a deputy for just over two years. Severe weather is once again a possibility today. Matt Eckhoff with the National Weather Service says things have shifted a bit. Severe threat overall is looking less impressive than it did uh, at this time yesterday, but nevertheless, there's still uh, a threat remaining. He says the greater threat is Wednesday. Lawyers for the man charged with the Delphi murders says that he was set up and abused by police. Donnie Burgess reports. Indiana State Police investigator Jerry Holman is apparently one of the men who interrogated Richard Allen in October of 2022. Allen was eventually arrested, but his attorneys now claim he was never read his rights and that Holman continued to verbally abuse him and accuse him. The attorneys claim Holman said investigators had full proof that Allen was the killer, which Allen continued to deny. His attorneys want all of the statements made then to be suppressed for the May 13th trial. Donnie Burgess, 93 WIBC Mobile News. An Indiana National Guard soldier is being investigated in Texas for shooting a migrant who was stabbing another migrant on Sunday. The person who was shot at by the soldier ran back into Mexico from El Paso. A new era for the Indiana fever. With the first pick in the 2024 WNBA draft, the Indiana fever select... Caitlin Clark, University of Iowa. Caitlin Clark, college basketball's all-time leading scorer, taken first overall by the Indiana Fever last night. Head coach Christy Sides. She's just changed the landscape of women's basketball. Clark will be formally introduced on Wednesday. Traffic on the fives, Matt Bear. Yeah, Kurt, it is a crash in Lawrence, northbound 465 after East 56th Street, blocking the left lane of the main part of 465, not the express lane. Traffic jammed up back to I-70. Westbound 72 downtown, still stop and go after Emerson through the north split. Northbound 65, stop and go from 465 up to Raymond Street. South side, westbound 465, still loaded from I-65 over to South Meridian Street. That is because of an earlier crash in Fall Creek Parkway close to Evanston, 38th Street and Keystone Avenue struggling right now because of it. Traffic sponsored by Cracker Barrel. It pays to be early because of Cracker Barrel. You can get early dinner deals on their signature dishes weekdays from 4 to 6 p.m. starting at just $8.99. I'm Matt Bear with traffic on the Fives. Follow us at WIBC Traffic. Welcome to Tire Discounters. Oh, hiya, Phantom. Mike, you may be in big trouble with Chip Wood. Our owner? Free oil changes along with alignment on any four tire purchase michelin's up to 200 off yeah sorry mike but i'm telling but the wood family is behind all this oh those rascals but don't tell the accountants of course not and what do they do again buy any set of four tires at tire discounters and get a free alignment and oil change make the michelin's and save up to 200 more see store for details Pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by AbbVie. The forecast from the American Standard Cooling Weather Center. Partly cloudy and warm. A few spotty storms possible this afternoon. Today's high 78. More widespread showers and a few thunderstorms likely overnight tonight. A low of 62. I'm Wish TV Storm Track 8 meteorologist Marcus Bailey for 93 WIBC. A clear radar for now. It's partly cloudy. 65 on Monument Circle. I'm Kirk Darling on the level, on the go, and on WIBC.com. This hour on 93 WIBC, powered by Dammons Lawn and Garden on West Rockville Road. You're listening to Rob Kendall. When we talk about sending money somewhere, mm -hmm. we're talking about printing the money because we have no money. And Casey Daniels. My government would never lie to me, would they? On 93 WIBC.
Good morning. It is Tuesday, April 16th. It is seven minutes after nine. It's Kendall and Casey on 93 WIBC. So yesterday was tax day as... It was the deadline to file your taxes or at least try to get an extension. And we had mentioned it yesterday that Suzanne Crouch, your lieutenant governor, tweeted something out. She said, today is tax day, Hoosiers. As governor, I'll lead the fight to eliminate the state income tax and you'll save an average of $2,000 each year. Of course, Suzanne Crouch running for governor in the great state of Indiana. And as part of her platform, she is saying that she will axe the tax. Well, that tweet has resulted in a fight. Feud. We're playing the feud. Playing the feud. Two people who totally deserve each other are playing a feud, Casey. Mm -hmm. All right, so our old pal, I'd forgotten this guy was even a person for a while, our old pal High Tax (laughs) Hupfer, Kyle Hupfer, he is the... Now, look, we, we pick on Holcomb on this show, and we do rightfully so, because... Holcomb is totally unqualified to be governor and had no business running a Wendy's, much less a state of 7 million people. But the reality is Kyle Hupfer has largely been in charge of the state of Indiana for the past seven years. He was Holcomb's right-hand guy when he got elected. He's been state party chair. And and so as such, Kyle Hupfer, the tax increases, the growth of government, the cronyism, all of these things have largely been at the foot of Kyle Hupfer because he's been mostly calling the shots. And uh, when, when, uh, uh, Brad Chambers decided to run for governor. I was going to say some stuff. That, you be proud of me, Casey, the growth I'm showing. I was I was about to say some stuff, and then yeah. I thought, no, I pledge the audience. Right, you're going to be positive. To have a more positive approach. And so mm-hmm. I'm just simply giving people's names. Now, okay. You know, well, I mean, at least for now. Uh, <laughs> when Brad Chambers decided to run for governor, mm-hmm. uh, Hupfer yeah. left the, the uh, state party and is now an integral part of Brad Chambers' Uh, election machine, which is the most expensive, powerful, uh, connected campaign team probably in the history of the state of Indiana. And what is amazing to me, so so Crouch tweets out this thing about axing the tax and blah, blah, blah. And Hupfer, who, by the way, I mean, think about it. He was joined at the hip with Crouch for seven years. She's the lieutenant governor. Mm-hmm. H- Hupfer and Holcomb are amigos and best pals. And he couldn't sprint to the nearest cellular telephone or uh, laptop computer and just tr- try to eviscerate her. Mm-hmm. Who needs enemies when you got friends like Kyle Hupfer? So he responded to Suzanne Crouch's tweet about axing the tax, and he said, you say eliminating the state income tax will be done incrementally, yet now claim this could be the last year Hoosiers have to file it, even though the state legislature hasn't approved such. This is more than misleading voters. It's an out-and-out lie. Okay, so there's so much going on with this, Casey. First of all, we've got to talk about, and this has been a reoccurring theme for the past seven years, of how just disrespectful and mean they are, the Holcomb people are, to Suzanne Crouch. Yeah. Like, don't kid yourself. The, The Brad Chambers campaign is Holcomb 2.0. It is the continuation of an attempt to get eight more years of Holcomb. You look at the people he's surrounded himself with. You look at the people that are calling the shots. You look at the way the infrastructure is set up. It is Holcomb 2.0. And this is a reoccurring theme. Remember in 2020, they literally took Suzanne Crouch off the signs. Like, if you look at the Holcomb re-election signs, there is, there is, on most of these signs, there's no mention whatsoever of Suzanne Crouch. Despite the fact that this woman was totally silent on all the bull crap Holcomb pulled, whether it was domestic terrorist meet and greets, which we'll talk about that here in a little bit, uh, the tax increases, the mask mandates, the shutting down, no matter what it was, she was the just most loyal, subservient person imaginable and they treated her like complete garbage, and they are still doing it. Mm-hmm. Like, this is this is a – Susan Crouch and Kyle Huffer were joined at the hip for seven years. If he wants to disagree with it, that's fine. But they throw this woman under the bus. They back the bus up over her. And you know why they do it, Casey? Because, because they, know, they can. Yeah, because they know she's not a fighter. Mm-hmm. Because they know what Suzanne Crouch actually is, and that's why this actually matters. It's hilarious to watch these two – Total establishment party insiders go at each other. That's funny on the peripheral. But how it affects us is it's telling you what they actually think about Suzanne Crouch. They know Suzanne Crouch. They do this because they know they can verbally abuse her and treat her like a dog 
and she will not fight, which tells you when she's governor how she would actually govern, and that's what actually matters to us. That's what we should be paying attention to, which tells you she will not fight for this. She will not actually get the income tax eliminate, eliminated, and they know it. Okay, so she says a vote for Suzanne Crouch is a vote to axe the state income tax, and she has said in debates that this is something that's going to happen over time. So for Kyle Hupford to say that it will be done incrementally, yet now she's claiming that this is the last year Hoosiers will have to pay income tax, he's not wrong. No, he's totally right. But she's a fraud, too. The whole thing is highly fraudulent. The whole thing is ridiculous. But And this is going to be one of our themes for today, is how ridiculous the politicians are and how ridiculous they behave. And they know what she is. She knows what they are, and they formed. And this is this is what it comes back to. You know who you can count on today in today's political climate, Casey? Us. <laughs> you can count on the Kendall and Casey show because we don't like any of these people, and we're going to tell you the truth about what's going on. But you're seeing this play out in real time. One on how unserious she actually is that she can't even keep her story straight on when she's going to get rid of the income tax. One day it's in a, you know, as you said in a debate, well, it'll be phased in over time. Mm -hmm. But then she's tweeting out as though, hey, if you elect me, this will be the last time you ever have to file an income tax right. return, which is total bull. She can't even keep her story straight. That's how unserious she is. And they're telling you how unserious she is based on the fact that once again, this lady, this lady raised millions of dollars for the Holcomb, uh, uh, Holcomb campaign. Casey, if someone gave me the amount of money that, that Suzanne Crouch gave Eric Holcomb, I'd go John Wayne Gacy on somebody for that amount of money. And they just treat her like garbage because they know they can get away with it. But it also tells you what sort of scumbag pe Oh, I wasn't going to be mean anymore. It also tells you uh, how uncaring... <laughs> And uh, <laughs> ungrateful mm -hmm. and unloyal, mm -hmm. the people who surround Eric Holcomb are that Kyle Hupfer would treat someone who is a loyal foot soldier mm -hmm. to the governor of the state of Indiana, which Hupfer is not only buddies and pals with, but that's essentially how he earns his living based on the success of the party. It shows you what they are, too. These people are letting it play out in real time if you'll just look at what they're doing. Just let them talk, and they're going to show you. Here's an interesting idea. We should uh, have Suzanne Crouch back in. I wonder if she would change her grade on Eric Holcomb at this point, because it seemed like they were playing nice, like she didn't want to say anything mean. She knows her name is attached to that administration. Administration. Hey, look, gloves are off now. Like they are saying she's a fraud and it's clear they're not friends. Yeah, but this is but this is again why if you elect her governor, nothing's going to change. She's showing you that. She had every opportunity from the opening salvo to come out and go, look, I tried very hard behind the scenes because as a government person, I've learned that's how things are most effective. And I've tried and I've tried and I've tried till my wits in. And you know what? I, I'm done with it, and I'm running on my own to fix the things that I could not fix when I was number two, and now I want to be number one, mm -hmm. and this guy's a colossal failure, and here's where he's failed, and if you elect me, I promise I will rectify the situation that I could not rectify as the number two. She had every opportunity to run out of the gate with that, and you just said, okay, hey, now we're listening. Now we're paying attention. She has refused this entire campaign to distance herself from Eric Holcomb. She's given him A's in many mm -hmm. areas. Mm -hmm. Even the most egregious of stuff, she'll only give him a C, which is the the COVID stuff. Mm -hmm. And yet, for all of that, this is how she still gets treated. And I guarantee you, Casey, I guarantee you, she will not respond to this with the appropriate response because she needs she needs to be liked by these people, and that tells you how she will govern. It was a big night last night for the WNBA, and that is up next on 93 WIBC. Like magic, it appears in the sky. A rainbow. Somewhere, Somewhere over that rainbow lurks not bluebirds or dreams. Hidden behind that beauty is trouble. Get a cone tornado right there. Don't be fooled. Tornado on the ground. Confirmed tornado on the ground. Confirmed tornadoes. Oh, my gosh. Look at it. Oh, my God. This spring, depend on your severe weather station. Baseball size hill. 93 WIPC. Hi, this is Denny Smith, and the allergy season is getting a jump start on all of us, and we really need to get ready to fight back. 
How about having Zero Res help you take on dust and dander and allergens and even bacteria in your carpets with a great spring deal? Get three rooms Zero Resified starting at just 139 bucks, and take 75 bucks off your air duct cleaning to get that true spring cleaning feel. It's unbelievable and kind of scary just how much of the uglies are in our carpets. And it's because those carpets are the largest air filter in the home. The Zero Res service is easy to line up. You can go online at ZeroResIndy.com. Do the scheduling at your convenience. And don't forget the ZR Water difference. No soap, no residue, no harsh chemicals, leaving things really clean. Now mention WIBC. Get three rooms of carpet cleaning starting at $139. Bucks. Plus, you'll get $75 bucks off the air duct cleaning, too. Call 317-388-5141 or book things online at ZeroResIndy.com. 